Hi guys. Logitech have released a new wheel, the G923. It looks almost identical to the five-year-old G29, but boasts a new true force force feedback feature. So is this wheel worth upgrading to, or is it just the same old wheel that we've been racing with for years? So I've been testing this wheel for a while now, and in this review, I'll bring you my opinion of whether the Logitech G923 is worth buying or not. So when Logitech revealed that they had a brand new racing wheel, Many sim racers got really excited until we all saw how the G923 looked. It looks identical to the G29. As you can imagine, this added a lot of confusion to where the Logitech G923 fits within Logitech's current racing wheel proposition. Is it truly a new generation of wheel? Is it a simple iteration of the current generation of wheels? Or is it just a full black edition of the G29? Well, since we already had a Logitech G29 set up on our sim rig, we thought we'd break out the G923 and do a head-to-head -head review comparison. So let's try to address the elephant in the room. The G923 looks identical to the G29 in almost every way. It features the same wheel design, the same button layout, and identical looking pedals. There are a few very subtle changes, which you'll notice if you look hard enough. The center logo is different, the shifters are finished in a black color, all of the buttons are now black, and there is a rather sexy True 4 sticker on the side of the wheelbase. So other than that, what is different? Well, the G923 for Xbox now includes a rotation dial and rev lights, which were only present on the PC and PS4 version of the older G29. This does bring a little extra functionality for Xbox racers, which we appreciate. And then there's the upgraded force feedback. Logitech say that the force feedback technology within the G923 is entirely new. They've introduced a new internal configuration, which they now call True Force. Logitech are still using the tried and tested method of gear-driven force feedback though. As you may be aware of Logitech G29s in the past, this isn't necessarily the best force feedback technology available. It doesn't produce the most accurate or immersive force feedback. Despite Logitech updating the internals of this racing wheel, it still outputs the same force feedback strength as the old G29. Although Logitech won't confirm the exact strength of the new wheel, it certainly doesn't feel too much stronger than the G29. That'll put it at around two Nm. The force feedback itself doesn't feel any smoother than before, and we aren't too surprised by this. There is a limitation to the smoothness you can achieve with gears, and Logitech seems to have reached that with this generation of racing wheel. As you drive, you can still feel the gears turning, and this is especially true when making very fine wheel angle adjustments. If you're mid-corner and try to apply slightly more wheel input, you can actually feel the gears moving. As a whole, the force feedback in the G923 still isn't quite up to scratch when compared to the belt-driven force feedback in Thrustmaster or Fan Attack racing wheels. So with all that said, that begs the question, what exactly is Logitech True Force? True Force is the name that Logitech have given their new wheel vibration technology. It's designed to replicate the vibration that you'd feel in the car's chassis, as if you were driving it in real life. The goal is to add extra immersion to your sim racing experience and allow you to feel a stronger connection to the car you're driving. Does it work? Well, yes and no. When racing with the old Logitech G29, the only force feedback you'd feel is the connection of your car's tyres and the road. The force feedback would portray the bumps in the road and your car's grip with the road surface. Now, with the G923, you still get the same force feedback. You'll also notice a vibration through the wheel rim. Logitech have designed the G923 to utilise the in-game physics and audio to add extra vibration to the wheel. It converts the physics and engine audio into vibrations which vary in strength. The louder your engine and stronger the car physics, the stronger the vibration your wheel will be. This is immediately noticeable when racing, but it doesn't always feel natural. In fact, in some instances, it can take away from the actual force feedback. The vibration can sometimes numb your palms a little and it feels a little overdone. However, in limited cases, it can feel a little more immersive. You can dial this feature down in games such as Assetto Corsa Competizione, but I think the more subtle this new force feedback feature is, the better. Unfortunately at launch, this feature isn't even supported in the majority of racing games. I tested this with ACC, Project Cars 3 and F1 2020 initially, and only with Assetto Corsa Competizione did I feel the true force. And I have to say, in ACC it's quite impressive. As soon as you apply some revs, you really feel the vibration coming through the wheel and it's quite a nice touch. However, in F1 2020 and Project Cars 3, I didn't feel anything. It was almost non-existent. 
I'm almost certain every sim racing game will support this over time, but that support network isn't there just yet. As mentioned, the Logitech G923 uses gear-driven force feedback, which is a shame, as many sim racers, including myself, was hoping for a direct drive wheel from Logitech when they announced their new wheel. In fact, when Logitech announced that they were releasing a new racing wheel, I actually got very excited that another manufacturer was entering the direct drive space. Oh, how disappointed I was. We shouldn't have been too surprised though, as Logitech have never released a direct drive wheel in the past. And they're a company which likes to stick to mainstream gaming peripherals. They tend to leave the hardcore niche peripherals to other manufacturers. A couple of other new features that are present in the wheel are a new dual clutch system, but this doesn't feature dual clutch paddles. Instead, you map the second part of the clutch to a button, and then as you take off, you release the button instantly, which gets you to the bite point, and then you slowly release the clutch pedal to give you a better drive away from the line. In the games that I tested this with, mainly in ACC, it worked reasonably well. It certainly wasn't a game changer. There are also the new rev lights on the Xbox version of the wheel, which I was told by Logitech would be supported by all new racing games. However, F1 2020, Project Cars 3, don't support these rev lights or the new dial that's on the Xbox version. Instead, only ACC actually supported these, which is strange because if they're there and they're mappable on the Xbox, as ACC have proven, why would Codemasters not want to include it in F1 2020? But anyway, going back to ACC, the rev lights worked really well. They're quite nice and bright and very visual and something that I wasn't used to on the old G920. The dial itself is relatively loose, so you can overturn it a little if you're not careful, but you can program it to pretty much anything within ACC. So you can adjust your traction control up and down, your fuel mix, anything like that. And that actually worked really well. Moving on to the pedals, at first glance, they look almost identical to the old pedal set, other than the slightly changed Logitech logo that sits in front of the pedals. Pedal design, construction, and positioning is all identical to the old kit, which is good news for those racers who have nailed their heel and toe technique, as you won't need to adjust to new pedal positions. But despite the same appearance, Logitech say they have upgraded the pedal technology to make the potentiometer pedals a little smoother. Logitech have also spent some time making the two-step brake pedal a little more fluid, and this is instantly noticeable, especially when you compare the two pedal kits side by side. The new brake feeling is slightly softer and much smoother across its movement range. With the old brake, you used to have to stomp on the pedal hard to get to 100% pressure. With the new brake, it's much easier to modulate your pressure. You can hit 100% pressure much easier due to the slightly softer spring. Although this isn't a huge upgrade in terms of performance or quality, it's probably the part of the wheel which surprised me the most, as I really didn't overly like the last brake from the old G29, and it's a feature that Logitech should shout about more, as they really didn't mention it much in their marketing for this wheel. So the G923 only features one name, but how does that affect compatibility across consoles, as the last wheel had two naming conventions? Well, just like in the previous generation of Logitech racing wheels, the G923 comes in two forms, an Xbox compatible version and a PS4 compatible wheel. Unlike the previous generation, both these variants look identical and use the same name, which may add a little confusion for those who are buying the new G923. You just have to be extra careful that you're purchasing the right console version. However, if you're purchasing for PC, both the Xbox version and the PS4 version will both be compatible, so don't worry too much there. When it comes to games, this wheel will work across every racing sim available, although as mentioned, the True Force technology isn't fully supported yet. Also, the G923 will work on the new generation of Xbox and PlayStation, so you can pick it up in preparation if you fancy. If you order the new wheel and pedals from Logitech, it doesn't come packaged with the shifter, but if you already own the Logitech shifter, this new racing wheel is fully compatible. You can connect your shifter in the exact same way you did with the old G29, and it'll work straight out of the box. But coming full circle, who exactly is the Logitech G923 aimed at? It's a strange proposition. It's almost identical to the older G29, and doesn't change the tried and tested formula. It is a racing wheel, which is completely aimed at the entry level racing wheel market. And for that segment of the community, this wheel is still very well suited. It's one of the best of budget racing wheels available to buy, offering a complete plug and play package and a good quality build. The only downside of this entry level wheel is the increased price. Logitech have added an extra $50 or £20 onto the price, boosting it up to just under $400 and under £350. This does put it almost out of contention when it comes to a budget racing wheel, 
as brands such as Thrustmaster offer racing wheels for around $100 less. Despite this, unlike some Thrustmaster wheels, this racing wheel oozes extra quality in both design and build. And this added quality, combined with the superb game and console support, does lead me to recommend this racing wheel for new sim racers. But if you already own a G29 or a G920, should you upgrade to this new wheel? Well, in a nutshell, we wouldn't recommend it. The new G923 doesn't offer much of a different experience when compared to the G29, and the new True Force Force Feedback certainly doesn't revolutionise Logitech's racing wheel proposition. If you currently have a G29 in fully working order, don't worry about upgrading to this wheel. And if you're looking for superior performance over a G29, well, we'd recommend you start looking at sort of the Fanatec CSL Elite, that sort of class of racing wheel. And that'll do it for this review. Hopefully it's helped you make a decision whether this wheel's right for you. And if it has, please drop this video a like, and why not leave a comment and let me know whether you're gonna pick it up or not. Until next time guys, I'll see you on drag.